Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, to Archon Dota against Complexity Gaming in the grand finals of these American playoffs for the Star Ladder series. We're going to see potentially in this game, are Archon Dota going to move on to the finals in Minx, Belarus, or are we going to see Complexity pull a comeback? I'm Lyrical Dota, joined today by Trouf. How are you doing today, sir? What are you hoping and expecting to see in this game, too, here between these two sides? Oh, goodness gracious. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes these things do end up happening throughout oh. the whole course. Are you there? Hello. I'm back. I was still <laughs> muted on Skype. Got it. I'm glad you spoke right away because otherwise, uh, sometimes I'll speak and like, it'll just be a long pause. I instantly knew I was stupid and muted myself. <laughs> it's all good. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> but um, no, I'm just, I'm hoping for, I always like seeing different drafts from between game and game. I don't like seeing the same stuff. And we do see an undying ban. Uh, right away here from Complexity. Go with the Slardar here Dyer for themselves. As well as the Quap in the first phase. Okay. I think this just screams that they've been screaming against them and they've been picking up the Quap a lot. Yeah. And then, of course, the Shadow Fiend and the Doom banned out despite them picking up the Doom uh, themselves. And Alk and Io. So they're going to pick some Wisp themselves. Oh, man. This is kind of an interesting one. So. I talked about this in the previous draft, but Archon throughout the whole course of this playoffs have been running Alchemist consistently. And what we've been seeing out of them is obviously the normal acid spray, or excuse me, Greedle's Greed level one, get yourself a bounty rune, and then afterwards, go on back for leaving it just at that one point of Greedle's Greed and maxing stun. Sometimes we do end up seeing to go for a max greed build if you're Ten able to make it happen, remaining. but then afterwards going for the quick medallion into a solar crest and eventually picking Five on up a blink dagger remaining. and just roaming around the map and uh, really, really causing havoc. And it's looked incredibly Reserve strong. Time. I'm wondering now, Complexity did ban it in the first stage, so maybe they have some way to deal with this here. Well, step one is... Um making sure he does not get the bounty rune it, it's such a just sweat off your back like just having that bounty rune for alchemist you just feel like you're soaring to win like it just feels so good so if you're able to deny him that i think you're off to a great start so the way to do that is to make sure you draft very very strong level one it's crazy to think that securing a bounty rune or, or denying a bounty rune from another team is going to get you to win the game obviously it's not going to win you the game but it's going to put you in a great position to um, to bully him out of the mid lane because it's like the gold is great. Don't get me wrong, that extra 500 gold is amazing. But honestly, I feel like the, the experience is just as important because mm -hmm. two creeps and you're level two. Ten you're level two. That means in the in the middle of the first wave, you can start spamming your acid. That's really hard for most Five heroes to deal with. Remaining. So if you can deny him that, and make it so like you deny him the rune, then you start denying the wave. That means he's not going to get level two to maybe the second and a half wave which is really, really important if you're trying to bully him out of lane. So I think step one is making sure you, you draft heroes that can really, really fight at the level one. And, um, and also, more importantly, scout out where he's going. This is why Bounty Hunter is actually pretty good against Alchemist Five in the beginning, because remaining. if you're running around invis and seeing where the heroes are posting up, that gives you a good indication as to Reserve which time. rune they're going to go to, and then you can plan your level one fight accordingly. Absolutely. It definitely can make a big difference. It, you mentioned there's something that I really liked also a little bit earlier about the experience there and being able to bully Alchemist out of the lane if he doesn't end up getting that level two by that first wave. And I think that that's really relevant, particularly when you think about a hero like Queen of Pain, which has already been banned out, or somebody else like Alina maybe who can just go up there and spam a lot of nukes. It's a hero that you expect generally to be able to win the lane hard. And the way that Alchemist deals with this is just throwing down, down the acid spray back. and kind of step back a little bit, wait for the creeps to get a little bit killed off, and then you move forward and punch it in the face. Um, and, and to me, like that style of play is so frustrating to go against that if you're able to deny that through the first one or two waves, Ten Alchemist is just remaining. really difficult to deal with. I also want to mention here that Complexity end up going for the Ancient Five Apparition pick, remaining. and I think that this hero is obviously great against Alchemist, but it requires you to be able Reserve to deal time. with him through the first until Ancient Apparition gets his levels, essentially, yeah. because it's, exactly. it's a late game counter, but the early game is really what you need Dyer to do to shut down pick. Alchemist, I feel like. That's a really good point. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. It's not just you pick Ancient Apparition and be like, ha ha, checkmate, Alchemist pickers. <laughs> you got to get to that level six first. So I, I think it's, I still go back to the point that it's ex extremely important that you are ready to fight level one. Slardar's perfect for that. Ancient Apparition's very good with Chilling Touch. Um, 
I, I just want to also point out that they've banned out three out of the five heroes that Archon just ran last game too. Ten Undying, the uh, the tiny. Or sorry, they picked Undying for themselves, didn't five they? Seconds the tiny, uh, yeah. the tiny, and the uh, the Bat Rider too, are banned out. I'm I, now I'm forgetting Reserve already. Time. I mean, it all blends together. It's, it's no, they okay. didn't. They didn't pick the Undying. I'm so stupid. Yeah, all these games are kind of blending together. It was complexity, I think, that ended up <laughs> running the Undying last game. Actually, that's right. Yeah. Well, they banned out the Tiny and the Bat. I know that those two heroes are at least playing for Archon. <laughs> Definitely. But um, yeah, I, I'm interested to see if complexity do go for like the Bounty Hunter. I know they love to run it. I know that Z Freak loves to play it. Um, it's actually pretty good against Wisp because getting those tracks up uh, gives you, like I mentioned, the easy 350 damage or something like that of the mm -hmm. shuriken bouncing to and fro. So um, I think it's I think it'd be a good hero, but we'll see what uh, see what they're thinking of. I do like the bat ban. I think Archon ran it well. I think it really punished their ancient apparition lane, and since they have an ancient apparition again, it makes sense to ban it out. Well, one thing that I think we can definitely say about this game is with an alchemist on your team, you tend to know fairly quickly whether the game is going to be good or if the game is going to be bad, just by the nature of how quickly this hero scales up, and likewise, if you're able to shut him down, how hard you shut him down. And there isn't a ton of middle ground, I feel like, because every cre creep ends up mattering that much more. They do end up picking up the Bane now for Archon. And another thing to think about, you we've talked about it a couple times in this draft, Complexity haven't really been drafting a ton of stuns or control of their own. Uh, and right now, with the Slardar and Ancient Apparition, and if they do end up going for that Bounty Hunter that you talk about, still left with maybe not too many ways to be able to interrupt TPs. Do you think that that style is still, you know, worth going for? Do you think that it's still a, a something that remaining. can end up working for them, considering Archon aren't really ma matching Five the aggression? It all depends if you have the main points covered. Can we push high ground? Can we win team fights? Can we gank? Reserve and time. if you if you have answered to basically two out of three of those, I think it's fine. Um, having all of them was basically what Archon had last game, which is why I really just uh, praised Fluff for his draft. They had everything. They had gank, they had farming potential, they had high ground pushing, they had um, strong lane. They had everything. It was just a very, very nice draft. So it's, if, you don't, if you're not drafting too many stuns, as long as you fulfill those requirements, that are, those, yeah, those prerequisites, really, then um, I think you're, you're okay. Slardar gives you just a plethora of stuns in, in his own right. I mean, this guy has a extremely low cooldown main spirit stun in eight breaker. seconds there's there's tons of stuns for you right Dyer there um, but they go with the spirit breaker as their four which i think is still okay i still think it's just very important that they they have vision of where this alchemist is and they're ready to fight i would hate to see them just give him a free rune and just not contest and just dodge each person each mid laner gets the rune i don't think that's the way to play against alchemist one of the first um times we saw Alchemist kind of exploding in the NA scene was for the Frankfurt qualifiers. And I remember watching Cloud9 at the time with their old roster. Um, I remember them playing against, I forget who it was, I think it was Five actually Unknown. No, I think they were in different groups actually. But Well, maybe they played against them after they, they popped Reserve out of the groups, time. but I forget who it was. But they were so good about finding where the Alchemist was going. The second the, the game started, they TP'd their Ancient Apparition in the mid lane, they warded Oh, they were on Dire, so mm -hmm. it's going to be if you're Radiant, you're going to ward somewhere else. But they TP'd mid, and they warded so that they would have vision of uphill, so they would know where the, the other heroes were standing. And it was that vision that led them to ultimately win that level 1 engagement and get both runes. And I would like to see Complexity Gaming do something like that. Ten seconds yeah, absolutely. I, I think that you can't overestimate how important it is to be Five able to uh, get on out there. And also with the you know the lowered cost of TPs nowadays, you're able to make uh, that investment much less costly to, to be able to go out there and you know you end up dropping down 75 TP for a you know a, a TP scroll early. That means that your alchemist is potentially or the enemy's alchemist is potentially died, denied 500 gold. We do end up seeing a gyrocopter here next for Archon, and with a Bane gyrocopter, this looks like a lineup that can probably, at least to some extent, fight early for the runes, but Viper is the next pick for Complexity. I I like this draft better for Complexity than the last game, um, but that being said, the last draft for Complexity really didn't end up working out for them too well. I do like Viper against Alchemist. It's very, very strong in the mid lane against him. I'm wondering, Archon have a couple of different options here. They can go aggro tri-lane with a very, very nice gyro, bane, and wisp. But that's Five very strong. Remaining. They can all just also just play it safe. Go bane, gyro, top, wisp, alchemist, mid, wisp, stacking for the alchemist. Get him a ton of, ton of like, so much farm, even if he has a hard time against Viper. And then some kind of strong off lane. That's the more safe route. That's the more standard route. 
That's what I expect them to do. But whenever I see a Wisp Gyro, I think of old Cloud9 with Eternal Envy, mm -hmm. and they would always just go aggro Tri-Lane, and it, they, they won every Dream. single time they did it. Um, right. Even if they died once or twice, they actually found out the PL, and Dire team pick. that's a kind of interesting ban. Huh. I, I guess maybe with their offlaner here, we'll see in a second what it is, but potentially a hero that doesn't deal super well with him. And I think that probably also, uh, I guess in my estimation here, you, you have a Spearbreaker that might be running a sort of dual offlane here with the Slardar, and then an Ancient Apparition as the support, so you want to be able to ban out a hero that remaining. can sort of sustain and lane a little bit effectively. Brewmaster going to be picked up this time around. So this is sort of a variation of the draft that Complexity ran against Archon in Game 1 of their last Best of 3s that they played two days ago. The main mm -hmm. pieces that get switched out is a Gyrocopter instead of a Shadow Fiend, and um, they also ran the Io in that combo as well, and it worked really, really great. So... Monkeys Forever Brewmaster is, I think, what this is, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. I'm, I'm very curious about this PL ban. Like, I, I, are we... Am I missing something here? Like, were they, were they thinking they are going to go aggro trialing with Oh, wait, PL? yeah. Okay, no, I'm tripping. I, I thought that that was Archon banning out the PL. I don't know why Complexity banned that. Sorry. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> yeah. um, but that doesn't make... Like, were they going to go aggro trialing with, with Gyro and then have Ten PL solo the remaining. Slardar? Or were they going to do the other way around and have Gyro Solo Slardar and then go out. I don't know, that's a weird ban to me. I'm not quite sure. That's, a, that's again a, a, a fifth ban, or lack of a ban from the last game, that could potentially bite them. We'll see how um, strong this Brewmaster does in the offlane, or if he goes safely against Slardar, there's still that option, but still probably going to go offlane. And, and then the Vengeful Spirit, Spirit for Ziz. So a carry Venge, taking, some, uh, taking a page out of VP's book, it seems. Hey man, they're a good team. Also, <laughs> we'll see. I'm I'm really curious. I want to see what they have coming up their sleeve here. It's a lot of minus armor. Also, Viper. We talked about it in the first series of the day. That Nether Toxin being able to double down on that amount of damage. It's not against a Huskar this time, but it's again against an Alchemist, a hero that can sometimes sort of fluctuate between that life and death point if he ends up going for uh, something like that armlet. But I do think that it's probably going to be a, a an early medallion out of Alchemist. I, I've been known to be Ten wrong, um, but he's picked that up, I think, in the past five Alchemist games I've seen five of him, seconds. all yeah. five games. It was, um, I call it like the miracle build, because Miracle started doing it at Frankfurt when everyone was rushing the Radiance, which Radiance is still good in some situations, but, man, when Miracle was doing this, the, yeah, the solar, the Tread Solar Crest SNY Blink, it worked every time, and it was, it didn't seem like there was a situation where it was bad. Like, it seemed like it was always viable. But the Venge, ugh, I, I, I'm really not sold by it because when Panda splits, Venge is just, he probably is already stunned once. He's just like a right clicker. He doesn't really do much in fights. His, his range is quite low. So he's almost essentially a melee hero going up against Calldown, going up against the Panda split, going up against the goo coming out from the Alchemist. I'm not a fan of this Vengeful uh, Spirit last pick. Well, time will tell what ends up happening. It looks like, at least for now, they're ready to trade off runes, something that you were not too fond of before. Uh, we do end up seeing an early Observer Ward drop this time for Archon to ensure that they're going to be able to uh, get themselves out. But actually, we haven't seen Complexity show here. Now that Z-Freak and all of them are moving in, they're going to realize that this lane, or the top rune, is free for them. And I think Archon are comfortable trading this 10 days out of 10 days on the week. Every single day of the week, they are comfortable with this. I, I think it's a really big oversight to just be you know be okay with giving an alchemist a room it's basically it's almost literally a full hero starting out with x you know 500 gold to put in perspective it's like you have a sixth hero with that much net worth coming into your game it's very very good okay good he did level up his greed i've seen so many that. times where they, they forget to do that yeah um that definitely would have been the most uh disastrous thing that could possibly happen for you at the early stages but uh limp now on the viper is going to be going up against the alchemist also worth knowing the alchemist does have the healing salve already on him as well as two shared tangos and this is something that i was wondering if we were going to end up seeing whitebeard move into the mid lane as this bane to help out a little bit against the uh viper for the, at least the first couple levels but z freak was not a hero i was expecting to be here um does have the potential to get a bash since he did level at first unfortunately not able to get that 17 percent against the bane and uh, this is going to be a little bit longer before Alk gets level 2 because we do yeah. have the Bane here sharing experience. That's the only thing I don't like. I feel like Dyer's if Bane was just sitting and going to stack, you would have that level 2 faster. And the thing is, if you're going 1v2, 
against this lane for Alchemist and you hit two before everyone else, that means your goo is going up against two very underleveled heroes in the mid lane. So, that's the only thing I don't like about how this setup is, but now he hits level two. Now we can start throwing down that uh, acid spray. Absolutely. Well, we will see how this goes. Um, I think that probably top lane is going to be not a whole ton of kill potential here unless somebody sort of gets very, very greedy with it. Uh, Brewmaster obviously is just sort of going to be trying to um, get as much levels as he possibly can here. Same with Swindles. And do you think there's much kill potential here at all? I think, um, I don't know, both of these heroes are pretty good. Like, Brewmaster was always thought of as being one of the better heroes against melee heroes, but same thing with Slardar. So I would say it's a relatively even matchup. Yeah. I would be a little bit more comfortable playing the Slardar in this matchup just because you have a you know, very low cooldown of your Slithering Crush. And actually, now you have a charge coming out from the Spirit Breaker to maybe get something uh, get something done. But the Creep Wave is going to be pretty far away by the time he gets there. I don't know if, if, unless he plays really far up for some reason. See how he's standing up here for kind of not very much reason. Sprint coming out, stun comes out from Z-Freak, maybe gets him 70%. That damage from that stomp is insane! Oh my god, and he might be able to get two here. Z-Freak is dropping pretty low, taking a lot of damage, but might be able to pen him on in. They do end up getting a bit of a return stun. Monkey's Forever dropping really low, and first blood going Z-Freak's way. It's worth noting down in the bottom lane, that was a charge away from a Fluff and Stuff uh, IO, as well as Whitebeard, who were sort of uh, dealing a little bit of damage to him. So I, I think that at that point, um, they're maybe trying to bait that out a little bit, but weren't able to get the return kill. Hanskin now getting chased on down by the gyrocopter, as well as Whitebeard. This is going to be a kill on top of him. Not going to be able to get Zizzy, though, as he just backs over underneath the tower. And Viper has a lot of CS and a lot of denies, Radiance but Alchemist does have 10 CS as well, so Moose still finding his farm. Unfortunately, no stacking is going on as they are running the aggro tri lane. That is one of the fallbacks here. Limp, who does level up the corrosive skin, very, very good against the asset. Double TP coming in. As he is charging up the stun, Wisp comes in to help him out, and I think that's going to be a dead Viper. One of the drawbacks of this hero is your movement speed is extremely low, and with him not having boots, it's very easy to punish that. That is so frustrating as a Viper. You need to be able to win that laning stage so hard because of your lack of a great farming mechanic. And I, I just I struggle to see how he's going to be able to catch up super well against an alchemist who by his very nature is about snowballing forward. This is going to be a charge forward on a monkeys forever. We do have on the backside Whitebeard coming in as the Bane. I don't think they find a kill here, but the Bane is definitely at least going to give them enough pause to make sure they don't want to go. And this is the other part. Now that alchemist has been able to get a kill on top of the Viper, they're free to be able to roam the Bane around and, and start winning other lanes as well. Yeah, just really good communication from Archon. You could tell that as they were going for kill bottom, they were still talking about potential kill in mid, the leveled up stun here from Moo. And then at the same time, while they were doing that, it's very easy for a gyrocopter off... Oh, hold that thought, the Swindles is uh, slept up here. The stop coming out, JL wasn't in the vicinity of it, and they're going to get a very easy kill up onto the Slardar after JL rotates top. I love this movement from Archon, they're playing very, very well. They're really great. And Alchemist gets a bounty rune to top it all off, because that is what he does, that's who he is. Is going to be flying something out to himself. That's going to be a Gloves of Haste. I don't think he goes for Midas. Yeah, it's his treads. Uh, I would have been very surprised if he would have gone back for a Midas. But Monkey's Forever is going to get stunned up now. Magic Missile. Also the Chilling Touch. A couple more right clicks, but not going to be able to get in range with the bonus movement speed coming from Tether. Slardo has TP down here. Maybe looking for a potential kill. He does use the Sprint. It's level 2. Uh, but they're pretty quick. They need to get a stun. And yeah, I think Monkey's Forever is going to die here. Up being the crush. One more right click is going to do it, and unfortunately, not quite enough regeneration from Fluff and stuff as he moves back to just block on out the creep wave a little bit more. 500 gold swing at the end of that day, uh, and Io has been a part of two kills, so he's getting a bottle on top of the magic stick. I was actually relatively decently farmed compared to the other supports here. Yeah, and uh. I see Swindles is trying to rotate. Yeah, I think he's trying to scout out if there is stacks, but there's actually none here. Mm -hmm. So that is the only drawback here for Moo. But he's got that one kill, even though he's got 14 CS. Look at his farm. You don't expect this out of 14 CS coming up from your mid laner with Treads, Bottle, TP, and almost level 6. Yeah, it's just silly. Alchemist is a very, very good hero. Um, as we Charge up top. Charge, Jio, they're going to cancel it on off. A little bit too deep there for them, as also Bane was in the area. Uh, mid lane, maybe going to be able to make a jump here on top of the Viper yet again. They do have the stun charging on up. They're going to throw it out, but Limp is just going to back out. 
was just barely uh, close to being able to get gone on as he got the bonus attack speed coming out from uh, Moo as well as just, of course, the natural minus armor that comes out on top of the Viper. And that's one thing that Viper can struggle Radiant's with, I feel like, a little bit at least, is uh, if you get the minus armor down on top of him, he doesn't have the highest HP in the world. He relies a little bit more on corrosive skin, I feel yeah. like, uh, to deal with it. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, and even then, the corrosive skin is great, but when your when your HP numbers are low, it doesn't it doesn't save you that that much. I hear a Hastrin being popped by Fluff and Stuff. He comes down, helps out monkeys forever. There is a Salve being popped here from Handskin, as well as a Courier running through them. But it will be safe and sound as it delivers some wards and I think boots or something. Oh, Hastrin! Oh, Zephyrk actually goes through. The charge is going on to monkeys forever. He's so close to level six. Quite gonna be able to get it, but the TP on in, they're gonna be able to get here. Fluff and stuff is going to fall. We also have Alchemist in there, are four heroes coming in here. I think that Z Freak is going to die as Monkeys Forever does also have another stomp in three seconds. He's got a charge if he can find the target. Maybe uh, asleep. Bane. White Beardy runs in front of it, unfortunately. He does get the sleep. Very nice. Okay, I'm just gonna be able to pick that one off there as well with the rocket barrage. Nicely done to finish him. And that bottom is five lane. heroes, though. Yeah. There was a lot committed for that, definitely. Net worth is a, only a two, I mean, it's an even trade, but you're farming right now uh, on the on the Vengeful Spirit while you end up having to move the gyrocopter all the way on over to the mid lane. I hear a call down somewhere. Oh, it was mid. Just a zoning call down, as we call it. Get away from me, Viper. That's what he says. <laughs> a charge on top of Whitebeard. They don't have these camps stacked up, but maybe that's what we're going to see in a couple of minutes here for J.O. I think that they cancel out that charge on Whitebeard, just trying to get back to lane a little bit more quickly. Let's take a look at where we're sitting right now. It's been a bit of action early on, about seven kills in under eight minutes. We do have just about a 750 gold lead into the favor of Archon, as well as an experience lead of 1,000 going to Lexi. Jumping forward, Swindles is going to run away from the combo of the gyrocopter as well as the IO, and then TP out of here before things get a little bit too dicey. And Moo, unfortunately, is end up getting his uh, room denied, and now they're gonna be able to make Hanskin pay for it. Take this, they say, as he uh, just ended up taking that away from him. A nice little bit of gold going back the way of Alchemist, who has been able to pick Anishan off his medallion. Yeah, he's just uh, off to such a great start. Um, Viper, he's he did very, very well in the mid lane, but not not good enough. Not good enough to where he can start taking over a game. He really needs his mech, and you see, how, you see the damage is so easy to get all these denies with this Nether Toxin. But um, Alchemist is Alchemist. He's gonna find his farm elsewhere. There's a charge up top. There's a call down actually. Very, very nicely timed from Z Freak or onto Z Freak. I think Z Freak's just gonna fall. Swindle's also dropping pretty low. They do end up getting the cold feet on J.O., but with the cold touch, Balls in the face. Get him. No, not going to be able to make it happen. The swap on back. Fluff and stuff is going to charge on forward with the tether to get out of there, but still ends up falling in the end to the Vengeful Spirit. Another TP on in. This is going to be the Brewmaster. Should have level 6 at this point as we do get the char... Okay, no. We're not going to be able to find it. So leaving it alone for now. A one-for-one one trade. Spirit Breaker for Io. Not the worst in the world. Yeah, pretty even, and it actually favors Orkun because it was complexity responding. And that's your hard carry Venge that has to rotate up there. And they aren't able to transition it into a tower push, no tower damage really. Uh, they're just biding time now for the Brewmaster to get his blink. Um, and then Alchemist to, you know, get more items for him. The Gyrocopter, whatever he needs to get. He's actually going to TP bottom and just farm that lane, it seems. Yeah, Fluff and stuff is getting a little bit uh, initiated on by Z Freak. See if we're trying to get fresh with a little ball of light, and here we sit, Gyrocopter. In terms of this build, do you think that it's, it looks like he's going straight for a Sanjin Yasha maybe, considering he's picked on up the Belt of Strength. What do you think about the item choice of, you know, potentially going for a Drums first versus this type of build? Um, oh my, I heard a charge series in Invis. I love Drums on Anji Heroes because, you, oh, I, there's a Mystic Kill. Shoot, there's action everywhere all of a sudden. <laughs> But the, the damage output, I will say, despite me not really uh, uh, caring for this Vengeful pick and the whole scheme of things, the synergy, the synergy between Venge and Slardar is insane. The, the amount of Radiant negative armor you give with the extra amp damage um, from the Vengeance aura is just insane. So those two are very, very nicely comboed together, but we'll see if it is still relevant as we approach the mid game. Viper strike on top of Fluff and stuff in the bottom lane. It's going to stick a charge back up and then try and TP out. Look at the damage coming out from this gyrocopter. It's just so much. 
and they're able to turn back around what was a gank from an invis up viper as well as the charge and they just find that kill now monkeys forever is going to get a little bit of a return here on the swindle they do end up getting the crush as well as the swap back but now you're potentially a little bit caught out we do have the brew split if they want to commit it and not waiting for that one they're going to back on out and leave it alone for the time being hoping to find that blink dagger as you mentioned on that brewmaster before they commit anything further yeah, it'd be nice to also get some levels up on the Whitebeard as he just hit level 5. There is an Ancient Apparition Ice Blast here with the charge. Someone's looking and it's actually just going to pop a Panda Split and they're just going to run away. Can he catch somebody? He does get the Yules up. I think they need to bring more members of Archon up here and here comes JLT being up with the Gyrocopter. End up committing the Rock Toss as well. He's going to get lifted again in a second if they want to. Actually doesn't have enough mana. Seven more seconds before he has enough for that. And now the Brew Split is over and they end up having to sort of stare awkwardly at each other in the top lane as actually the farming really right now is is great across the board for the rest of complexity they're spread out very very well i think that they're going to lose a tower for it but it's kind of almost worth it you're sort of making the rest of this group group up a little bit together they do end up bringing on back Lou a little bit he's separated from the herd might go down the a blast is well committed and now archon suddenly are in a bit of a bind J.O. is pretty low, and they're going to charge on in after Fluff and Stuff. They end up getting the bash onto the Gyrocopter, and he ends up falling. Now Fluff and Stuff is going pretty low. No Brew Split. Oh, they don't quite hit the Crush. As they do get the turnaround, there's going to be a lot more damage coming out, and Limp is just a beast in these fights. Monkeys Forever is going to fall as well. This is going to be four heroes here and a tower to back it all up. Jeez, the, well, the damage output there is real. The really nice swap on Avenge, and I think that... Uh, I think what happened is the tether happened already, and so they knew that if they were able to just focus down one target, namely the alchemist, that they wouldn't have the tether ready to save him. And alchemist just was not, despite having the solar crest, he dies so super fast. I don't think they missed at all either, and uh, really caught him off guard. Nicely played there from Z uh, Zissi. Absolutely, and we do also have on the uh, ventral spirit drums getting picked on up, so. That's a pretty good Radiant's item. You talked, we were talking about its effectiveness attack. early, and you know, for a hero like this that does have that limited range that we've sort of alluded to a couple times in the cast, it's really important to make sure that you're able to get that movement speed to catch up to your opponents, and not really a hero yeah. that you oftentimes want to b build a blink dagger on. So I like the drums pick up here. It makes sense. I really like drums for Agi carries because it gives you basically six free Agi. If you look at a bracer, it gives you three, six strength. And then you also have the Robe of the Magi, but when you combine it with the whole recipe, it, it gives you this random six Agi uh, by just completing it. So it's it's very good in terms of cost effectiveness for Agi carries, Dyer's like Gyro. To answer your question, yes, I do like it on Gyro. I like it on, in this instance, Venge. Um, not to mention, of course, the charges you use and the extra movement speed and the aura and all that jazz. Oh, Relocate, he just got level six. And... Is that for go, go, Yeah, I suppose so. This is... Uh, very bold. Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, what's going on. Someone help me. <laughs> I, I I'm not. I'm gonna, I don't know. You're the analyst here, man. We're gonna <laughs> I, don't end think, up soon. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to that. I think that. I actually have no idea. Let's just. All who's right. getting caught out now? Fall down as well. They're gonna be able to get the beam script down on top of Zizi though. He's not gonna be able to do damage throughout the whole course of this. And you end up getting a dot of damage though onto the gyrocopter. Another two quick kills. Buyback by the Alchemist. They're trying to reinitiate here. Monkeys Forever is a bit slow though, and they're not gonna be able to catch up to him. I don't think the stun is gonna hit on the handskin either. And just like that, the chase is all gone. Where's the dream? Swindle's thinking about reinitiating. He does have his blink dagger up. Oh god, if they're able to catch on out move here as well, Archon might be in a bit of trouble, but no, they're not gonna commit any further. The mischance there at the end, I think, is probably what dissuaded them from going any further onto Moo. That's two buybacks on two cores, man. That is a massive win for complexity. And it goes back to what the hell was that relocate all about? And maybe their idea was we can relocate and just do Roche or something. But they they clearly weren't all on the same page because they were like going into Roche, then going out, and then like, oh crap, we wasted too much time, Just ba let's just bail. That was very, very strange. And then because of that, Wisp goes back, uh, back to the top lane. Alchemist is caught by himself mid yet again. And our Archon are just... It seems like Complexity are taking these fight fights and Archon are just not ready for them whatsoever. Um, but yeah, Complexity are, are capitalizing on that. So it, it goes both ways. Very well played by Complexity. Absolutely. Vengeful Spirit. Uh, Viper now has his mech. So a four-man smoke on over towards the bottom lane. 
with relocate uh, back up actually they can get out of here if there is too much of a problem but that would end up costing fluff and stuff his life I am pretty concerned about this lineup here we do end up having to charge forward they end up breaking that off not wanting to charge into the middle of a call down which probably makes sense under the tier one and playing things a little bit more safe at this point in time it's worth noting right now net worth graph about 4,500 gold into the favor of complexity as well as an experience lead of 3,500 net worth he's still up on top but the viper is closing in pretty close behind him this is a hero that wants to be significantly further ahead and has not been able to do that and you talked about it not really any stacks in the jungle either for this guy to take he's gonna need some type of ability to sort of give himself another boost of uh gold influx is there anything else that you feel like right now that archon can be doing besides just trying to farm a little bit do they want to take another fight I don't think you can fight at all if you're Archon. I think you need to split, and I think they have the tools to to do so. I think they, like you have the Wisp, it's very easy to just kind of split and farm. That That's one of the ways you can exploit the Viper pick, is that you can't move around very easily. They don't have a Wisp to keep, make them extra mobile. Blink, stun, initiation, not quite there. He just gets the Blink and to the amp damage. Just scout him out. But yeah, I think you're if you're Archon, you need to split. You need, you need to wait for this Blink. Oh, he actually just got it. He yeah. just got the blink delivered for the brew. And he's very close to level 11, too. Maybe he waits for that extra two duration on his ulti. But, um, yeah, there, there's no way you're fighting Complexity's lineup. Not with a mech, not with a blink on Slardar, and Venge having some good stats. One key thing about Venge, too, is if this does get later, um, is that he is extremely high agi gain. It was one of the things that was buffed about him recently, too, is that he gains a lot of uh, agility per level. So, as this get, as you, if you ever do transition to him into a core, or if he's a core to begin with, he can pack a punch in the late game. Absolutely. Well, as you mentioned, level 11s, those elusive couple of levels now being picked up pretty soon by Archon, the Brewmaster getting close to it in the mid lane. Likewise, Archon Gyrocopter is getting relatively close. Ancient Apparition just picked up his Hand of Midas, so he's going to continue to scale well into the later stages, and obviously the Aghanim Scepter always very potent against him. We do end up losing two towers off the back of it as Complexity just march on down that bottom lane. And I think that, like you said, definitely a good idea. If you realize, you know what, we can't fight, don't even risk it. Don't even try and get yourself into that type of position. They back on out. They have the Blink Dagger on monkeys. Now, here's my big question that I have for you. Do you think that Mu wants to go for a Sanji Yasha first, or is it more worth it to try and find a second source of initiation out of that Blink Dagger on him? I would like the Sanji Yasha just because I think he needs the raw HP from some kind of source, whether it's a Vitality Booster or the Sanji or the Sanji Yasha. Uh, I think getting, oh he is, alright, he's going to go for the blink, so he feels they really need the initiation. Hmm. Um, we'll see if they can keep him alive, it's very important that the tether is available. Uh, there's a number of times, but then again, if you can get a nice swap and break the tether, uh, then it doesn't even matter, so they have to be weary of that. Fluff, he actually tethers himself onto a cliff, I don't think that was intended. Going to um, waste a little bit of time there. Yeah. These things happen. I'm sure it's going to be okay, but yeah, probably not intended there. They do end up smoking up, so they're going to start off the initiation. That ward from Complexity was very, very close. I don't know if it scouted out any of it. Some trees were down, so it should have seen a little bit over there, but I didn't see any pings. Oh, what an awkward initiation. Monkeys gets on off the brew split. Whitebeard, though, is going to go down almost immediately. Look, doing so much damage. Now the AA Blast is going to connect onto the Gyrocopter. Z Freak goes down. We do still have the Brulings running around this place, but Moo is the one that is not contested at this point in time. Swindle's chasing after Handskin on the IO. They're going to lift on up the Viper, keep him away, at least for the time being. Zizzy is going to commit and be able to get taken out no, they're going to be able to kite him away, and I think that Zizzy is going to live now. Swindle's running in the other side. What a great play. The jump forward. Moo drops also. Oh, what a play right there. The swap by the Ventral Spirit. Saving her life. Really well played by Zizzy. He is on fire this game. And um, it was actually a fantastic brew split from, from Monkeys Forever. His micro was very, very good. He was he yules the Viper throughout most of the team fight. But the problem was Viper, as you mentioned, what like two shot the bane for a number of reasons he had a dd and he was amped up mm -hmm. the, and i don't think he missed a pill either yeah. that was insane the Dyer damage coming out from a limb who now has a haste rune in his bottle with a yasha so uh, but very very nice play there at the end from bench as he gets on out of there also think about this too if bench for some reason dies at the beginning as there is an action up top as white going to fall again wicked sick here for uh for limb but say bench dies in the beginning of the fight He's going to apply that debuff of the Vengeance Ore to everybody, too. So it's it's kind of like, well, if you live, that's great. You're going to do damage. If you die, well, you're you're negating all the damage from Archon, too. 
Well, and that's sort of the same type of role. I mean, not the same exactly for Viper, but if you try and focus him down, you're going to be taking damage from Corrosive Skin. And also, if you let him live, then you're going to run into a position where uh, he's just going to keep on doing a lot of damage throughout the whole course of the team fight. And you kind of need two different tornadoes now at this point out of the Brewmaster to be able to lift two heroes up. Because both of them, if you let them live, you're going to be in trouble. But if you try and focus them down, you're also going to be hurting yourself. Uh, obviously in different ways with the minus damage versus the actual just minus life <laughs> um, that you end up getting yeah. with the Viper. But regardless, uh, it, it's pretty clear that at this point, Arkhan are going to need a lot of things to go their way. In terms of the net worth across the two teams, 7,500 in the hole. Not often what you end up seeing with an Alchemist lineup. Experience, 7,500 also. And Hands of Midas's across the board pretty much at this point for Complexity. As we do end up seeing a Mist Crush, nice blink away into the Fiend's Grip, but there's going to be the swap to break it on up. I think that Bane is still going to end up going down here. A Blast on top of Moo. This is not what you want to have happen at the very start of this fight. They are going to be able to pop the Bruce Split off the back of that. Handskin gets lifted up in the air. They do end up dispelling that in the end. Jump forward. There's going to be the Counter Initiation with the Charge on Throat. Swindle now jumping after him. I think that they find this kill here. They're waiting to potentially catch him as they do end up coming out of that. Monkey's Forever is now out of his brew split. Handskin, they might have dove a little bit too deep here. Moo is back in full effect, but he's dropping so low. He ends up going down. Swindles is now going to be able to get away from their godlike streak on lift. This Viper is just so much damage. Oh my god, he is godlike. He went from 0, 2, and 0 to 10, 2, and 5 now. His, his effectiveness in these team fights is just insane. The amp damage. The amp damage coupled with the fact that he gets the extra physical damage from Nether Toxin is just eating these people alive. It's insane how much damage he's doing. And and the Archon are not taking the fights on their terms, but a complexity is, and they're doing it with great force. I thought for a second there was a chance with the brew lift on up and the reinitiation again, but it's just they have too much damage right now and while they don't have a ton of stuns they're making sure that they land them on the proper targets each and every time you saw the crush there connect the second time through the first one was a little bit of a misplay but uh still it's just so important viper now also has his mechanism or excuse me his manta style so you're going to be doing that much more damage with all the illusions uh zizzy with the vladimir's offering everybody's life stealing it's it's just a, a great time and I'm not exactly sure how you get back into this game at this point for Archon, because he doesn't well, seem like you can five man into him anymore. It was the same idea as it was ten minutes ago. They needed to just dodge fights and split, try to get some items up onto the gyro. Um, they were taking a lot of fights before the blink happened onto the panda, and then when panda got the blink, I mean, Monkey's Forever has been playing these panda ultis pretty well. But they're just they're just down too much net worth that it doesn't. You look at top really lane. They're gonna be able to catch on the hand skin, but the charge on throwing Z Freak Moo goes down yet again. All right. Oh, it's not what you want out of your relocates. Um. Uh oh. <laughs> Z. Hmm. All right. We'll just let that one slide, hand skin. <laughs> not sure what that is all about, but they end up being able to uh, reinitiate there. A little bit of friendly, casual all chat is always good in Dota 2. Let you know that you're I, watching I'm willing to bet that that was just a miss, like you mistype. Because okay. Euros are so friendly and mannered. They they never they never <laughs> bad. They're not they're not North American people. They don't bad mannered <laughs> in all chat. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. <laughs> I, and I know Hanskin. This guy is like he's got a heart of gold. Okay. He he would never try to be mean. He also has a hand of gold, by the way. Hey yo. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> As we just move on through that one. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Shano now with the Sanj, as well as going back for the uh, Helm of Iron Will. So Helm of the Dominator afterwards, seeing like he needs to scale well into the late game, but he's going to get charged over. Swindles ends up connecting on top of him. There's going to be the A Blast on the backside. Can they actually connect on him? It doesn't. Moo is forward now as well, so they have caught out Z Freak here. He might be in a little bit of trouble. The Force Staff from Swindle to try and keep him alive a little bit longer. The rest of the team is coming on in the other side. Worth noting that Zizzy is separated from the rest of the squad, not being able to deal as much damage as they want, but Vipers come on in. That's going to be a kill for him. Meanwhile, we also see Gyrocopter take on out the Spear Breaker. So can Limp do enough damage here to take on... Oh my god, just look at him fall. They end up being able to get the kill, but they still do end up killing off the Ventral Spirit. 960 gold going the direction of Brewmaster. Moo back in the middle of everything. He's able to take on down the Ancient Apparition, but Limp is still here. What are you going to do against this? There's the Relocate, trying to keep Moo alive. Can he survive one last hit? Is it going to be enough? No, Moo is going to be able to get out of there. It does look like now trying to reinitiate onto the DD'd up Viper. Buybacks across the board, four of them so far in this fight. They're trying to catch the stun, do end up getting it onto Limp. He's dropping really low. There's going to be the call down. 
if they can get this kill, it's so much gold going back their direction. And he does finally fall, but it's the Aegis still there. He's not going to be able to kill it. Well, maybe they kill him a second time also. They've Larder committed a ton. I think that they get the second stun, and he does go down. No man to dodge is going to be enough. Oh, Slardar just killed himself! Oh no, he ran in and he was trying to blink in. He had no health to begin with, and he got hit by a bunch of balls. Oh, he lives with five- No, he died with the virtuals! He was gonna be fine! He was gonna be fine! He lived with five HP after the the urn. Oh no. Well, well, it didn't really matter too much, but, as you mentioned, that's 1,200 gold bounty. Oh, you know what, though? Jail bought back, I think. So yeah. he gets, like, none of that bounty. That's really it, it frustrating. It says he gets it, but he doesn't. That's really bad. Ooh, he would have loved to get that on a different hero, but that that unless unless the um, buyback gold thing, whatever you call it, the penalty went away. But I think maybe it did go away. There was quite a bit of time. I could be wrong. He has a decent amount of gold now, and he does also have the courier flying out to him. It's going it to must, okay. uh, It actually, must no. have just gone away. Oh, Fluff and Stuff's gonna go down here, I think. Oh, dodging away from the Ice Blast. Nice play there. Um, not sure if that was intended or not, but let's say it was. Yeah. It's actually, it wasn't an item. It was just a TP coming out to Jaya, so he didn't get the extra gold from that. Just, uh... Yeah. Oh, that's frustrating. Yeah, because, like, he's, he's had these items for quite some time, I think, so... Maybe it was, like, just about to wear off. I don't remember. I wasn't really paying attention. Because I didn't think that they were gonna get that kill twice, but... They did, and... That's... Oh, that, that really, really sucks that you don't get that huge bounty. So the plus side of this is that they were defending around a tier 2, or where the tier 2 was before. So they didn't lose racks off the back of that, but they still had to commit three buybacks to win a team fight. And it's worth knowing the Spearbreaker did buy back in that engagement as well. Uh, so I think that they're in a decent spot. I mean, let's take a look at net worth across the board. Still 15k gold lead for complexity. But I don't think that Archon are out of it by any means. It's it's a it's less big lead than we saw in the last series, uh, the last game rather. Just a jump forward on his Izzy. That's going to be a connection as well as a jump forward. He's going to be able to get out of there, I think, maybe. They still land the stun on top of him, but the A Blast is on Moose, so he's not regening. Z Freak is on top of him. Does he end up being able to get enough regeneration? No, he ends up popping. Now we end up seeing the Gyrocopter take out the Venge, though. They've committed the Bruce split for this, and it looks like Z Freak might be able to get away. They end up dropping the Sentry for him. Oh, God. Limp does so much damage, but they lift him up into the Yule Scepter. Fluff and stuff dropping low. They are now no longer in boost with Florm, so Swindles is going to be able to walk away from this one. They're just kiting them all over the place. I think they need to get out of here, though, because Viper's coming in, and now they're going to be able to maybe get the kill. Oh, God, the mechanism comes in last second, and that's going to be it. Swindles ends up getting godlike streak off the back of it. They're charging forward, wanting a little bit more. If they can possibly find Fluff and stuff, he has that amplified damage on top of them. No another strike for another 30 seconds, but they do still have the urn if they want to use that, and Fluff and stuff able to tether away last second. Man, the Viper plus Amp of Slardar is just insane. I wonder if we can see this combo more and more. So the damage output is insane. And the thing about Viper, too, is he doesn't really build as he's starting to now. But before, up to this point, he wasn't really building any damage items whatsoever. He was just building tank and maneuverability with the Manta, being able to get out of things. Wasn't any damage sources whatsoever. It looks like probably an MKB now to get rid of all this annoying evasion from the side of Archon. Definitely. And, and when he gets that, it's going to be even scarier, but... It's a really nice combo, this Amp plus uh, Viper. So, it looks like now Alchemist is going to try and commit to the next item, which is an AC, uh, as we do see Monkeys Forever get charged and then it gets cancelled. I feel like, at, at a certain point, it's really hard to transition from the sort of fighty build that you usually see here out of Alchemist to go into um, something more along the split push where you have the Radiance and uh, an Octarine Manta, all that stuff. Is it there ever a point where it's worth it to go back for those items, or is it just more, oh god, fucking stuff is going to get jumped on here, and I think that he does end up falling. They do tether away, going to be able to, oh, that was a little bit of a misplay, but Whitebeard still ends up falling, and Spearbreak kills off Io. They're diving tier threes at this point. Mu has the debuff. They're going to kill him off a second time. Regeneration is not going to be in full effect, as Jo's going to end up falling. BKB is up on Swindles. So much damage. Z-Freak might end up falling, but at what cost? Honestly, you've lost four other heroes. Buyback status on the rest of your cores is only on the brew who might end up actually going down here uh, i think that he gets away on the earth goal or the earth panda but still what's he to do nothing <laughs> his splits down he actually does have a bk oh wait no that's ben just bkb i was looking at the wrong hero but tons of damage gonna be applied to this rax definitely gonna be one set might even be two depending on how fast they can take this 
Hanskin, he's got his ags, and like after this frag, he's gonna have his ags basically. Like jump initiation, board. unfortunately, doesn't hit. As he sleeps himself to, to set up the stun, here comes the AA Blast to relocate out and save the Bane inside of his own base. That's when you know things are bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not the best. If but it worked, hey. Yeah, it, totally. It worked. Um, and I think that they need... That's actually probably going to save the second set of racks for him, too. I think if they kill the Bane there, they might feel comfortable with uh, without the, any real control coming out from Archon to be able to go for that. The Gyro's net worth is just abysmal. It, it's very... This is the second game in a row where Gyro just hasn't been able to find anything. HOTD and Sange at 31 minutes is just... Oof, not where you want to be for obvious reasons. Monkey's Forever, he's charged. He's got a ton of gold onto him. Is he going to go for a Radiance? He has a Relic. I mean, I don't think it's a... I don't think it's a Rapier, but stranger things have happened, I guess. It's kind of cool. What do you think about that? Well, uh, interesting, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> I uh, um, I think that possibly Refresher would have been better, but he doesn't have the mana pool to cast it twice, I don't think. Yeah. So he's just going to go for Radiance, I guess. <laughs> Could be a weird Abyssal Blaze starting out, but I doubt that. Does he go for some kind of Rapier play? And like, yeah, I don't know. This is very weird. Um, but they got to take some risks, right? Yeah. They're down quite a bit. I like the IO picking up the Ghost Scepter. To me, that makes sense. You've just got all this damage that's coming out in the right click from the uh, Viper. Of course, the big problem that you end up running into there is Viper Strike is going to really, really tear through you if you're not careful. Um, Alchemist still a ways away from being able to pick on up the AC, and it looks like they're just going to wait for Roshan. And it is a long Rosh timer. Uh, BKB up now on Vengeful Spirit. They're really getting all the pieces just to be able to siege on up this high ground here in a couple of seconds. And it looks like Swindles is going to feel comfortable enough to go forward and jump onto Moo. A Blast is going to connect the debuff, and I think that he ends up falling. Very, very, very easy pickoff. Uh, Moo, it, it, like, it's so tough because you need to be able to push on out there and farm, otherwise you can't catch up. But if you push out there and farm, they have lineups that can push that and, you know, make you pay for it. Uh, they are going to be able to know that this Radiant ob uh, Observer Ward is in their base, but I don't think they can move forward and even try and Dying kill it off without getting killed. Swap out, coming on to J.O., and he's just dead, I believe. Very, very easy. No buyback on him, no buyback on the Alchemist. This basically comes down to a, a Bruce split, but and two supports. Maybe I don't think they can fight this. I think this is going to be just game. He sells his Vlads to finish the Radiance. That's the dream. Um, we'll see if that's what it is. He does end up selling. Sold his boots. <laughs> All right, why not? Who needs boots? I got a Blink Dagger. I am a brew. Take the Radiance Burn. Feel it, everybody. They're going to end up doing a lot We're of damage to it, though. Oh, God. It's so sad. The Radiance is still there, though. GG well played ends up getting called. Archon loses game two of this series. So we're going to be going on to a game three in the grand finals. Thankfully, this time, Twitch did not crash on us. Thank you guys for joining us. Trout, thank you for being a knowledgeable, wonderful person. Um, any thoughts as we move forward into this next game? We've seen a couple of pretty uh, stompy games so far. I think this game is very encouraging to the Viper pickers out there, if any, because <laughs> it, what happened was the opposite of what you typically see it happen with a Viper, which is you snowball, you destroy your lane. Um, don't get me wrong, he was doing well in terms of CS in his lane, but he did get pressured. And he's like I said, he started out this Viper who ended 16-3 and 10 started out 0-2 and 0. He was having a terrible game. His mech was coming out very, very late. But the combination between him and Slardar and the Vengeful Spirit Aura um, and the constant aggression from charts is just, it, it's encouraging for Viper for Viper players out there because it shows that, yes, even if you get have a very slow start, you can still be a very, very big pr uh, problem in the game for the enemy team. Um, so I, I we saw Viper banned out last game. We'll see if it's banned out again here coming out from Archon. It might even warrant a... I don't think they'll ban it out in the first two, but it would be curious to see if uh, Complexity pick it up in the first two. Absolutely. Well, we'll see in just a couple of minutes here as we're waiting to move on into Game 3. Stick around, everybody, for the grand finals of the North American Playoffs Star Ladder Star Series iLeague. See you guys soon.